Hi folks, DC here from DC's Gadgets. And the topic for today is laying workers. Something that sooner or later every beekeeper is going to run into this. And so we'll talk about what causes it and we'll talk about how to fix it. So what causes laying workers? If the queen is not present in the colony, her pheromones aren't there, worker bees can develop ovaries, start laying eggs, kind of like a last ditch effort by the colony to save itself. Problem is, worker bees cannot have, don't have and cannot have the capacity to fertilize eggs because they don't possess spermatheca, they don't go out and mate with drones. And so while they can develop ovaries and lay eggs, they cannot save the colony. Um, a couple of things in a beehive. Everything in a beehive is controlled by pheromones. From the egg that's laid all the way up to the queen, they've all got pheromones. They all put out a scent that bees can recognize. And so the queen essentially has two jobs. And her primary job is to lay eggs. That's her primary job. And her secondary job is to generate pheromones that control the colony. And part of that is those pheromones control, suppress the ovaries and worker bees so they don't lay eggs. Now, brood also emits pheromones. Open brood and cat brood both, more open brood than cat brood, will emit a pheromone that will also suppress laying workers. Which is why if you have a queenless colony and you have open brood, that open brood will help suppress the workers from developing ovaries and having laying workers. So you get into these situations where you find that your queen, you have a queenless colony and you got to make a decision now before it happens. You know how much, how much resource are you willing to invest in a colony to try to save it? If you've got a colony and it still has brood, you can try getting the queen. Um, the old basic standby is just throw a brood frame in there, let them make a queen. I'm, I'm more and more hesitant to advise that to anybody. There are times when that may be the best thing to do, but. That seems to be the, the number one go-to thing. And you gotta think, think these things through. Now, if you got a struggling colony that's fixing to die and you throw a brood frame in there, you're, you're giving up half of a split to save a struggling colony. And it may not be the best thing to do. <coughs> you might try cutting the strip out of comb like I was showing in before. And I've, I've taught people making, um, making a few queen cells. You cut like a three or four inch strip of comb that's got eggs and larvae. Stick that in a colony. Now, if you've got a struggling colony and you want to see if they'll make a queen, I would probably do that before adding a brood frame just, just to throw the brood frame in there. And it depends on the circumstance. You know, if I've got a really strong colony and the queen, they threw a swarm or superseded and the queen failed, but I still got a lot of brood in the colony. I may go ahead and throw a brood frame in there. Of course, the fact that I make queens, I'll probably throw a queen in there. And we'll talk about nuke boxes in another video. In fact, I'll, I'll do nuke boxes probably tomorrow. How I think everybody who has bees should have a backup queen handy. We'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll be back on laying workers. So how do you determine if you've got a laying worker colony? So the the standard procedure is to look for multiple eggs in the cells or eggs on the sidewall of the cell that aren't down the bottom or drone brood in worker sized cells. I mean, you can tell a drone brood because it's got that big dome cap on it sticking up. Those are the standard things people look for. But you don't always see this because sometimes you might have laying workers in a very hygienic beehive and the hygienic behavior because of the pheromones coming off of the different cells, if you've got very hygienic bees, they'll detect that you've got multiple eggs in a cell and they'll start cleaning them out. Or they may detect that the, that the, uh, the larva is really not viable and they'll clean it out. Now you will occasionally find two or three eggs in a cell from a brand new queen. That's been documented. You get new queens that she's just started laying she may shoot doubles for a week to 10 days or so, but she'll calm down. 
when you're looking in your beehive and you find like multiple eggs in multiple cells, uh, that's something to look for. And then you're looking for various things. You're looking for that, plus you're looking for you know drone brood and things like that. But what do you do in a colony where you don't have those things? Say you open up your beehive and you can't find any cat brood at all. And you've got a spotty egg pattern, but it's individual eggs. And maybe you've got just little patches of brood here and there. These are the hard ones to diagnose. I just went through this in the past three weeks and finally shook the box out this past Sunday. So I determined it was laying workers. It's hard to figure that one out because, again, with the hygienic behavior, if you've got bees cleaning cells up because they know they're not good larvae, but you're finding individual eggs here and there, you got a spotty pattern, you might think you've got a queen, it's just not very good. But you could also have a laying worker. Or you can also go into a colony and find queen cells, or what look like queen cells, that they're making. Open or cat both. And this again, you know, it, it looks like something good, it looks just like a queen cell, you can't tell unless you look at other things. Now, case in point, this past Sunday we went in a box, had five or six what appeared to be cat queen cells. Now we get into the science of making queens. A queen, a queen can be made from a larva between day four and day six from egg. So if you go in your beehive and you pull a frame out and you've got the beginnings of a queen cell and you cannot find any other larva anywhere in that frame, that's not a queen cell. You got a laying worker. Because you would have, if you got larva the proper age to make a queen cell, you would have other larva. You'd have something else besides that. If you get a cat queen cell and you have no other cat brood at all, that's a laying worker queen cell. It's not a real queen cell. And this is what we had in that particular box. And the reason I waited long, longer because last week I had a small packet of some cat brood. And so I really wasn't sure if I was seeing a spotty pattern from a bad queen or laying workers. I suspected laying workers. But when we went back in this past Sunday... There was not a single brood, no cat brood anywhere. No older larvae in any cells, but what appeared to be like five or six cat queen cells. And so it's impossible for them to be queen cells. So I took actions, and my action in that case was just cut all the cells off and shake the bees out. So trying to fix laying workers. Now the, the number one go-to thing you find on most internet sites or YouTube videos is you, you take the colony across the yard, you shake all the bees out on the ground, you take the box back, you put it back together, and you add a brood frame. Again, you're that go-to thing of add a brood frame from another colony. And the theory behind this is, if your laying worker has never been out of the beehive, she won't know how to get back to the box, and so she won't come back and you'll fix the problem. Okay, We tried that last two years ago, a couple times. It didn't work for us, still laying workers. And they did not make a queen. Some folks will try putting in a queen cell or a virgin queen or a mated queen. It doesn't work. A laying worker colony, once they've established laying workers, they won't accept a new queen. And if you give them a brood frame, the odds are they won't make a queen. Um, pretty much hopeless. So the methods that I've used in the past to fix this, and it depends upon the size of the colony, if they're occupying six or seven frames in a, in a box, I'll try to salvage what I can. I may split them up, two frames in one, you know, add like two frames in one, another beehive and two frames in another beehive. You do it that way, just put them right in a box with other bees and they'll assimilate that way. Or I might take the whole thing and stick it on top of a strong colony over a newspaper and they'll assimilate that way. And from what I understand, because of that whole pheromone thing in a colony, the, the, the bees in the stronger colony will detect the pheromones coming from the laying workers and kick them out. And then last ditch effort, which has been my go-to for the most part lately on smaller colonies, I just, I get in the middle of my apiary to shake the bees out. Now we have an apiary at the club. It runs between 15 and 25 beehives at a time. I think it's like 21 back there now. So if I find a box of laying workers, I'm not going to put resources into it. I'll just, in the middle of the club yard, once I get done doing everything else I'm going to do, I'll just shake all the bees out on the ground, and I might put the frames, you know, 
100 yards from the, the apiary and let the bees rob out whatever stores are in it, and I'll come back the next day and grab the frames. So I get, one of the things you got to think of, sooner or later you're going to open your box, you're going to have laying workers, and you got to have a plan. Now, if you start throwing brood frames in a box to try to fix the box, two brood frames is a split. You gotta, you gotta weigh these things out. If I got a strong colony and I can sacrifice a brood frame, have I got two strong colonies that I can sacrifice a brood frame from both of them? You've got much better odds on making a split from two frames of brood and two frames of food than you have on throwing a brood frame in a colony that might be laying workers. So it's a, it becomes a personal thing. You get into this you know, the science of guesswork. You know, it depends on you as an individual. Now, how much are you willing to invest in this colony? How many bees are in the thing? How much cat brood is still in there? Uh, personally, for me, if, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with like two frames of cat brood. If I've got two frames of cat brood in the colony, I would probably invest the frame of brood. Uh, more likely, I'd throw a virgin queen in there since I make queens. Uh, but that's kind of that's the threshold I'm sitting at. Up to you. That's all I got for today. Tomorrow, we'll talk about. Uh, Emergency queens, backup queens.